At first, you'll be a Sherlock trainee. Look carefully at the pictures and pay attention to the smallest details to solve the riddles. Which one of these students has three mothers? It must be this guy right here, the one with the three sandwiches. The guy with three glasses got them from the cafeteria. He must be very thirsty, but it's not a sign of three mothers. But this one definitely brought sandwiches from home, so I bet it's him. Let me know if you disagree. Let's move on. One of the girls has a pet at home. Can you guess which one? It's the girl in the middle. Look, her hands and arms are scratched. She must be living with a cat. Okay, look at these three people. Who is a vampire? It's this guy. See, he doesn't cast a shadow. Something's wrong. Chastity was at a party and met three guys. All of them claimed to be pilots, but one of them lied. Can you guess who's not a pilot? Pilots must have perfect eyesight. This guy is wearing glasses, so he's not a real pilot. Look at these three students. One of them is left-handed. Can you figure out who exactly? It must be this girl. The outer side of her left hand has some ink stains. It happens when she writes. Since we write from left to right, her arm covers everything she's just written. Three best friends met for a coffee in the evening. Can you tell which one of them has a pet? Look at this girl's bag. There's dog food in there, so she probably has a dog at home waiting for her. This one is super easy. Three sisters came to visit their parents. One of them got engaged while she was away. Can you tell which one? It's this girl who's wearing a ring. Three men came to a job interview. The company didn't want to hire fathers because they needed full commitment for the first year. All men said they were single and had no families, but one of them lied and actually had a daughter. Which one? It's this guy here. Why would he wear a pink scrunchie on his wrist if he wasn't making his daughter's hair right before the interview? Okay, now let's go and look at people's houses. Here are the bathrooms of Daryl and Tiberius. Which one of them has a girlfriend? It must be Tiberius. Look, there are two toothbrushes in his bathroom. Nevea and Nicoline are students. Both of them live in a one-room apartment with their friends to split the rent. Their mothers once came to visit. Take a look at Nevea and Nicoline's bedrooms. Can you tell which one of them is dating her roommate? It must be Nevea. In Nicoline's bedroom, there are two single beds. And in Nevea's bedroom, there's just one big bed. Look at these three friends. One of them isn't really a human. But which one? Look, this guy right here has only four fingers. Perfect, we trained you well. Now let's solve some cases. The city bank was robbed and Detective Callum was on the case. After a long investigation, the police managed to track the robber and found the money hidden in the nearest desert in a cactus bush. They couldn't see the robber's face, but there were three suspects. Take a look at the people. Who is guilty? It's this man. Look, he has many scars on his arms and hands. He must have gotten them when he was digging the money in the cactus bush. A group of friends asked Billiam if he wanted to join them on a hike that weekend. He said that he couldn't because he had broken his arm. The next day in school, Billiam indeed appeared with a broken arm. So, he stayed at home and his friends went hiking. On Monday, the friends met in school again. Billiam said that he had just stayed home watching TV. His friends told him about the hike and asked why he had lied about the broken arm. 
Why did they decide that his arm wasn't really broken? Last week, Billiam's right arm was broken. On Monday, it was the left one. He must be faking it. Mr. Tucker called the police and reported that he had been robbed. Detective Callum arrived at his place and found Mr. Tucker tied up to a chair. Mr. Tucker said that he had been sleeping when someone wearing a mask had broken into the room. They took him right out of the bed, tied him up to the chair, and then took all the savings he was keeping in the wardrobe. When they left, he managed to call the police because his cell phone was in his pocket. Still, Detective Callum didn't believe him. Why? Mr. Tucker said that he had been taken right out of bed, but the bed was perfectly made. I doubt that a robber would care enough to make Mr. Tucker's bed on their way out. Detective Callum was spending the winter holidays at a ski resort with his friends. In the morning, they were going to go skiing on the fresh snow that had fallen at night when a local police officer called him and asked him to come to a hotel nearby to solve a case. So, Detective Callum had to go. Someone robbed the cashier's desk and there were three suspects. Questley said that she was in her room all night sleeping. Egbert said that he was out partying in a different hotel and had just come back around an hour ago. Fenton said that he had been binge-watching a show all night but hadn't stolen anything. Who is guilty? It was Egbert. If he had just returned, he would have left his footprints on the fresh snow, but there were no footprints leading to the hotel as Detective Callum was walking there. And the name Egbert will make anyone suspicious. There was a car accident in the suburbs, and police arrived to investigate the case. The driver went into a cliff right where the road was taking a dangerous turn. The car turned around, and he was pushed out of it and got stuck nearby. He had his cell phone on him, so he was able to make a call. A police officer helped the driver out and asked him to show what was in the trunk. The driver gladly opened it with his keys. In the trunk, there was his suitcase, some instruments, and a spare tire. The police officer said that the accident had been staged. Why? The driver took the keys out of his pocket. If it had been a real accident, the keys would have remained in the car. Mr. Grayson called the police and said that she had been robbed. Detective Callum arrived for the investigation. Here's what she said. It was almost midnight. I was in my room upstairs painting. Suddenly, the power went out. There was no light or electricity, and I could only see the streetlights outside. Then, the stationary phone rang. I was scared, so I didn't pick it up. I stayed upstairs, and in about 10 minutes, the light came back. I just went to sleep, and now, in the morning... I found out that someone stole my grandma's diamond ring. Detective Callum didn't believe her. Why? If the lights and the electricity were out, how would a stationary telephone ring? This lady is making things up. Gavin drove to get some groceries and parked his car in front of the store. Of course, he forgot where he had parked and couldn't find his car. Luckily, he had taken a picture of his parked car, and he opened it to look up the number of the parking lot. The problem is that his parking lot number is covered, and the number of the lots nearby doesn't make any sense. Can you figure out what's Gavin's parking lot number and where he should search for his car? The numbers are just turned upside down in the photo. The numbers are 86 through 91 and his car is parked in 87. Now I have a short logo quiz for you. I'll show you a logo and you have to tell the company. Here's the first one. Do you recognize it? It's Honda, a Japanese car brand. This one is super easy. What is it? This is Pepsi, of course. What about this cute crocodile? Does it ring a bell? This is Lacoste, a French clothing brand. Another easy one. I bet you have it on your phone.
Yes, of course, that's Spotify. What about this one? Yes, it's Nike. This one is a very fancy brand. What's your guess? That's Louis Vuitton. Okay, another one for you. It's harder, but you've got this. What's your call? This is Reebok, an American footwear company. Do you recognize this bull? Is a Lamborghini logo. This is a painfully familiar yellow rectangle. Where is it from? That's the National Geographic logo. Porsche and Vinette live in a country where postal services are super unreliable. Everything sent by post is stolen from the package. How can Porsche send his wife, Vinette, a diamond ring if both of them can buy locks, but don't have keys from each other's locks? Porsche can lock the box with the ring and send it to Vinette. When she receives the box, she should lock the box with her lock and send it back to him. When he receives it, he can open his lock and remove it and send the box back to Vinette with her lock only so that she can open it once she gets it again. There is a box filled with balls of different colors. Five red ones, eight blue ones, and 11 purple ones. Ninja has to pick out balls blindfolded until he's sure that he has at least two balls of the same color. What's the minimum number of balls Ninja should take out to be sure of that? Worst case scenario, he'll be picking out the balls of a different color every time. There are three colors, so if he picks out three, they might all be different. But if he picks out four, then the additional one for sure will match one of the existing colors. So, Ninja should pick four. 